untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today I was taking a look at a mono black graveyard deck titled Tomb Raider, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, because the deck is built around a desecrated tomb. The three mana artifact says whenever one or more creature cards leave your graveyard, create a 1 1 black bat creature token with flying. And our deck is filled with cheap ways to get back creatures from the graveyard to enable our desecrated tomb. Of course, the obvious inclusion is the Cauldron Familiar plus Witch's Oven combo, which allows us to get back Cauldron Familiar turn after turn, while draining the opponent for one life each time the Familiar enters the battlefield, which will generate a bat token each time as well. But then we also have some other creatures, including Dread Wonder, a 1 mana 2 1 a zombie jackal that enters the battlefield tapped, and for 2 and a black, we can return a Dread Wonder from our graveyard to the battlefield, but we can only activate as a sorcery and only if we have one or fewer cards in hand. Then we also have Gutter Bones, a 1 mana 2 1 that also enters the battlefield tapped, and for 1 and a black, we can return Gutter Bones from our graveyard to our hand, but we can only activate this during our turn and only if an opponent lost life this turn. And then to help us fill the graveyard, we have the full playset of Stitcher Supplier, 1 mana, 1-1 one, one zombie, that when it enters the battlefield or dies, we get to mill 3 cards. So a great way to find all these creatures like Gutter Bones, Dread Wander, etc. And then at 2 mana, we've got 2 copies of Skyclave Shade, a 3-1 that cannot block, and we can also kick for 2 in a black, in which case it enters the battlefield with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and it has Landfall, saying when a land enters the battlefield under our control, if the Shade is in our graveyard and it's our turn, we may cast it from our graveyard. So that's another way to trigger Desecrated Tomb. And then we also have the full playset of Reassembling Skeleton, a 1-1 Skeleton Warrior, which for 1 on a black we can return from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped. And then at 3 mana, besides the full playset of Desecrated Tomb, which is great in multiples, as we'll be able to generate a bat token for each Desecrated Tomb, we also have two copies of Ayara, first of Lochthwain, the 2-3 legendary Elf Noble, since when Ayara or another black creature enters the battlefield under our control, each opponent loses one life and we gain one life. So this is great with all our creatures, and the bat tokens from Tomb are also black, and of course doubles the damage output from Cauldron Familiar, and we can also tap Ayara and sacrifice another black creature to draw a card, so that also gives us a built-in sacrifice outlet, so we can make sure we can sacrifice our various creatures to then get them back from the graveyard. And then at 4 mana, topping off our curve, we have two copies of Rankel, Master of Pranks, a 3-3 legendary fairy rogue with flying and haste, and when Rankel deals combat damage to a player, we can choose any number of the following three modes. Between each player discards a card, each player loses one life and draws a card, and each player sacrifices a creature, so that gives us another sacrifice outlet. And then two copies of a Dramatic Finale from Strixhaven, the enchantment that gives our creature tokens plus one plus one, so very synergistic with Desecrated Tomb as well. And whenever one or more non-token creatures we control die, we get to make a 2-1 white and black inkling creature token with flying, but this ability triggers only once each turn, although especially with cards like Witch's Oven and Ayara, we can still potentially sacrifice creatures in the opponent's turn to trigger Dramatic Finale twice in one turn cycle at least. So Dramatic Finale is another great payoff card for the deck. And then going over the mana base, despite being a legendary land, we're still playing the full place of the Phyrexian Tower, just because of how powerful and synergistic it is for us. A land that normally taps for colorless, or we can sacrifice a creature to add double black. So by itself it can enable cards like Resembling Skeleton, as we can sacrifice it and use that to black mana to bring back that very same Resembling Skeleton and enable our synergies. And then we've got 16 basic swamps and 4 copies of Castle Lochthwain as another nice late game card draw engine. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a very nice opening hand. We've got uh, Witches of an Cauldron Familiar combo up against the Lurus deck. So probably going to lead with Witches Oven, that way if our opponent is playing a discard deck they won't be able to take that away to disrupt our Familiar combo. And then I want to run out probably second Witches Oven to make sure we use our Codless mana and then Familiar will have two ovens to play with. And we can potentially run out Desecrated Tomb next turn to start generating bat tokens. Dreadhorn Arcanist, okay. Now one card the opponent could have in their deck that would be problematic is Colagans Command since it can blow up one of our artifacts. No! 
Fortunately, this takes a second to go through. All right. Dramatic finale to draw. So I could desecrate a tomb, but then we have to sacrifice familiar and we won't be able to trigger it. So I'll just play gutter bones and pass. And then next turn we can maybe run out a tomb. Claim on gutter bones, we'll just sacrifice to the witches of an response. And then I won't feel bad sacrificing familiar to Phyrexian Tower next turn since we'll already have a food token. Arcanist attacks can flashback claim if they want, we'll let them cast it. And then we can sacrifice familiar. Take one. So that wasn't so bad. And then since we still have Phyrexian Tower to sacrifice familiar, it's pretty safe to bring it back here. So lots and tap, we get to play Desecrated Tomb and hit for one with Familiar since Arcanist tramples so there's no chum blocking involved. Hit for one. And pass it back and then if we can play Finale 2 here, things are gonna get very interesting. Opponent just puts Lurus in their hand. So their interaction not quite lining up here against what we're doing. Take one. And we'll get to generate two bat tokens. get to untap and then yeah let's cast dramatic finale here cast it first sacrificing familiar to pump up or two bats get to hit for four and then i want to make sure to trigger finale in my turn and the opponent's turn so we'll bring back familiar right away sacrifice it Make an inkling, and we can do that again in the opponent's turn. All right, not bad. Opponent's already facing a lethal. It's gonna be an inquisition, that's fine. Claim on my inkling, think they can have it. Although I could have also sacrificed it because we have double cauldron familiar now, so would have been able to bring both back. Although this way we get to trigger finale by sacrificing familiar instead. But I'm gonna claim a bat, sure. Worst case scenario, if they have a plum, the forbidden, and sacrifices both of my creatures. Uh, just a village rights, that's fine. And then we'll bring back some cats. Could have also tried to ambush the Arcanists, but didn't really seem necessary. Alright, and might as well play Rankle. And attack for the win, so definitely got to see your deck in action here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with an acceptable hand. 
double gutter bones we can potentially sacrifice to Frexian Tower to ramp out Ayara and Dramatic Finale. And these two also play well with each other. Turn 1 Authority of the Consuls. Good way to stop our Cauldron Familiar. So do we want to play Ayara this turn? I think so. And then next turn we can play Gutter Bones, bring back another Gutter Bones. So put on to White Life Gain deck. Ooh, Graph Digger's Cage. That is unfortunate. Well, that's gonna make things a bit more complicated. Now, luckily, we can still get back Gutter Bones since that doesn't go straight onto the battlefield. But still, not something we want to face. So I guess Gutter Bones plus Finale is still a nice engine here, despite the uh, Cage. Apparition gonna exile Yara, but Phyrexian Tower still gives us a Sacrifice Outlet. So can attack with Gutter Bones and take it from there. Can't play Finale without sacrificing Gutter Bones here, so... Probably better to play some more creatures out. Glass Caskets, presumably after Gutter Bones here. So we only have one Gutter Bones left to leverage our Dramatic Finale. Second Cage, sure. Dread Wanderer does get stopped by Cage since that goes straight onto the battlefield. So, play Finale attack. Opponent trace for shade since we won't be able to bring that back. The token also pumped by finale, so 4-4 four, four here. And then I could sacrifice gutter bones and bring it back, but then we've already triggered finale, so that's not gonna happen. And we can't activate this in the opponent's turn. So probably just gonna pass. Could see a sweeper here. And then we'll need Dread Wanderer to deal damage to the opponent so we can bring back Gutter Bones. Although I guess we'll get an Inkling as well, so that can also do it. So yeah, Dramatic Finale gives us a chance this game, despite all the hate cards. Chandra Torch of Defiance, at least we can pressure. Goes after the token, sure. It's playtime. And then we might as well make an inkling here. Gutter Bones only comes back in our turn. So we wanna take out Chandra, attack the opponent, so we can bring back Gutter Bones. So we could play it, sacrifice it, bring it back again. Just to generate another inkling. That looks good. The only downside is that we didn't leave up tower to maybe respond to another exile effect. So we could make sure Gutter Bones goes to our graveyard instead of Exile. So that could have been a reason to maybe play a different one drop here. Rekindling Phoenix, that's fine. Alright, we can play a bunch of creatures out. 
and we can attack with the team. So Cage also prevents Rekindling Phoenix from entering the battlefield. So that happens. We get an inkling. Bring back gutter bones. And then we'll play it alongside a dread wonder perhaps and keep up Frexen Tower. We've already made an inkling. Alternatively, we could just play double dread wonder. Now I'll put uh, gutter bones in play. Could empty my hands, but I would rather keep up tower again to potentially sacrifice gutter bones. So yeah, despite all the hate cards, our deck still operating reasonably well. Seeing the power of dramatic finale, especially nice alongside something that lets us sacrifice a creature in the opponent's turn. Ooh, Karn the Great Crater could get Platinum Angel, although they're still pretty far from casting it. Gets Shadow Spear to give Phoenix lifelink. Might make it difficult to race. Although Frexen Tower lets us sacrifice a creature that gets blocked by the Phoenix to prevent a lifelink. Sacrifice Gutter Bones. And our opponent packs it in. Yeah, they know they're just gonna end up dying to our Inkling tokens. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Got our bones into shade, into tomb. With two creatures that can enable it, put it on a green white plus one counter deck. So having creatures that can shun block, like resembling skeleton, and then we can bring back to generate more blockers is going to be pretty key, and hopefully our opponent doesn't have a way to give their creatures trample, because a green white plus one counter deck can generate some very large creatures in a hurry. Since I'm not planning to attack with the Skycliff Shade, I'm probably better off playing Skeleton. And then I'll keep Gutter Bones on defense. Not a matchup where we're trying to race, just a matchup where we want to establish a nice board with Karnsang Desecrated Tomb, Dramatic Finale, and generate incremental advantage. Grakma comes out as a 4 4 thanks to Conclave Mentor. And we'll play Tomb. And next turn, Phyrexian Tower plus Resembling Skeletons, a great combo. Pastries Lieutenants, protection from multicolored, not super relevant. I guess our Inkling tokens are black and white. Probably want to just trade for the Shambler. Opponent does get a Knight token in return. But now we get to bring back our Skeleton. And then next turn I can play another Tomb and do the same. I could keep a bat token around just so I get the chance to enable gutter bones. So we have another creature we can return. Although that does mean taking a pretty big hit. Stone coil does trample, so that's problematic. So probably means I got a chum block now. Also has reach, so would be able to block our bat anyway. Yeah, Stonequill's a pretty big problem here. Well, we'll play Tomb. Play Familiar. And then I could bring back Gutter Bones here using Phyrexian Tower on the Shade. Trigger Double Tomb. But 
but I'll somehow need to get rid of the stone coil serpents. So let's just jump here, take six, and then try and assemble enough creatures that we can actually take out serpents. Play supplier. No great mills. Could do this at instant speed as well. So yeah, we'll pass. So we can bring back skeletons, sacrifice it, bring it back again. Dromoka's commands. Hey, yep, that works. And our opponent attacks with the team. Alright, so I gotta take out Stone Coil if possible. It leaves me one blocker. That's not gonna be enough to survive, is it? So instead, can try and take out Conclave Mentor. Chump, chump, take out a knight, something like this. Dreadwonder to draw, not super helpful. Although I can bring back another Dread Wanderer if I play one more card out. And then we'll pass. Yeah, we might beat that to the Trampler here, unfortunately. Can sacrifice skeleton, bring it back. But that still leaves the opponent with enough trampling power to kill us. So yeah. Trample's definitely one way to beat us. Otherwise we would have been able to stabilize quite nicely. Good game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got a pretty exciting hand here. Double oven with familiar. Play an oven first, I think. Just in case of a pillar of flame from the opponents. And then we can even ramp out dramatic finale, which will generate an inkling. Opponent a red-green into abundant harvest. Could be a land destruction deck too. Alright, well, we'll play Oven and Familiar. Don't need to play Tower just yet. Pass it back. And I'll happily play Dramatic Finale here. All right, Young Pyromancer can maybe match our token generation. If we want to ramp out finale, I guess we won't have any food tokens left, so maybe it's still better to wait an extra turn. Play Gutter Bones. Play Witch's Oven. Although could also leave the tower untapped just in case. And then attack for one. 
and we'll pass it back. Uh, it's going to be a Clothus, God of Destiny, although we can pretty easily circumvent the Exile effects by bringing back our Cauldron Familiar before it gets a chance to be exiled. We'll go through this as quickly as possible. Untap. And then we'll play finale. Sacking gutter bones, although they will be able to exile gutter bones. Is that an acceptable trade off here? I think so. Attack. And then we want to make an inkling right now. And then we can make one more in the opponent's turn. Gutterbone sadly does get exiled here. Another Pyromancer. At least Inklings give us some evasive threats so we can take over in disguise. Yeah, Triple Witch's Oven might be a bit too much for the opponent to handle. I'll play. And that should give us lethal in the air. That's going to be a Tarkas command. I think this also gives their creatures reach. So that's a way for them to block our inklings. Alright, so that's pretty cute. So those can trade off. Opponent takes three. That looks fine. And we will make them discard, lose one life, and sacrifice a creature, which will then also make an inkling for us, which we can use to then bring back our Cauldron Familiar by making more food tokens. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a reasonable draw. Turn one gutter bones, turn to shade, just a good aggressive start with a rankle we can maybe ramp into thanks to Frexian Tower. Opponent with ginger brutes into ornithopter, so maybe a tempered steel deck. We'll hit for two, fine with the trade. Now a turn to steal Overseer is going to be hard to beat. Volt Scourge. 1-1 one, one Flying Lifelink. So I could play Rankle. Alternatively, I can bring back Gutter Bones and play it, or bring back Shade. kind of prefer Rankle here. Then we can make each player discard. Don't know if we want to make each player draw as well. We'll go with the discard only. And then we can discard shade and play both shades next turn. All right, call of the Death Dweller. I'm intrigued. All that glitters makes sense. At least they didn't play it on the life-linking Volt Scourge, which would have been difficult to race. So we'll play a lands to play 
both our shades pre-combat, so we can sacrifice them to Rankle. Opponent gonna jump. Ginger Brood becomes unblockable and attacks for four. And a line of the stage finds Tempered Steel and Crystalline Giant, although they'll only be able to play one of those next turn. So one attack before playing our land. Opponent jumps Rankle with Ornithopter. Makes sense. Can still use Phyrexian Tower to sacrifice Shade to then replay it with Kicker, perhaps. Or I can just bring back Gutter Bones, play it, and that's my turn. Yeah, I guess that's good enough. Opponent goes for a Crystalline Giant. Needs to hit a pretty good keyword. Death Touch, not great for the opponent. And we'll attack with everyone. And now Rankle can force a sacrifice as well. Although Ginger Brute's gonna die just from the Crystalline Giant. Being gone, we can make each player discard, and I guess we can deal one extra damage since our opponent's on three. Familiar puts them to one, and a Desecrated Tomb, not a bad one, so we can play Tomb, play our lands, replay Shade, trigger Desecrated Tomb, can even sacrifice one of our creatures to Phyrexian Tower to play another shade, and our opponent's in trouble. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Lurus deck, and our hand's okay. Double tower's a little awkward, but I can work with it. If we draw a cheap creature, we can use tower to ramp out Ayara or Desecrated Tomb. And now we've got the Witches of Unfamiliar combo, so that's even better. Facing a red-white burn deck, it looks like. Could have played turn one familiar to try and ramp into Tomb or Ayara, but then we wouldn't have any food tokens to bring the cat back right away. And if they kill the cats, then that would also foil our plan. So yeah, can play familiar plus wanderer. And familiar gives us a nice chum blocker for Soulscar Mage. Dreadhorde Arcanist, also a powerful inclusion, and does Trample. Alright, Legionnaire, so... Opponent probably playing more Pump Spells than Burn Spells here. Which is not what we want to see, because it means they can make a bigger Trampling Arcanist. And Arcanist can get back the Gird for Battle as well. So we're jumping Legionnaire. Opponent gonna spread out the wealth, so it doesn't matter too much what we chump. Another oven is great, so I can attack first. Play Desecrated Tomb, sacrificing Dread Wanderer. And then play the tomb, play another oven, and now we can generate quite a few bats. Suppose we also could have uh, attacked for one with the familiar and then brought it back to keep it on defense. Mm, 
another legionnaire. Probably gonna have to jump with at least one bat, so I'll do this now. Alright, so now we can play Ayara, which will increase our damage output as well. And sure, I think I can start attacking now. Opponent's down to 8. And our opponent concedes. Yeah, we can sacrifice Familiar, bring it back, make a bat, drain the opponent for 2 essentially with Ayara and do that once more, and the opponent's just going to be dead by the time we untap. Sweet. So, yeah, overall, this mono-black sacrifice deck, of course, many of the wins are going to come from the power that is Colder and Familiar plus Witch's Oven, but Desecrated Tomb definitely adds an interesting dimension to the deck, and we've seen Dramatic Finale do a lot of work in our games as well today. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.